Why go to the moon? Well, for scientists, of course, the answer is obvious. They feel that the unexplored moon, thus far unexplored, will tell us many things about our Earth that we cannot find out by studying the Earth itself. In making it a comfortable place to live here, we have more or less wiped out its early history. One of our guests throughout our Apollo 11 coverage, we've already heard from him today, is Dr. Robert Jastrow, who is director of the Goddard Institute for Space Studies at uh, Columbia University. We put the question to Dr. Goddard, why go to the moon? The moon is a poor piece of real estate, but, and probably lifeless. But for precisely that reason, it is scientifically invaluable. We would like to know what conditions were on the Earth in the first billion years of its history, about three and a half billion years ago, when life appeared on this planet according to the fossil record. We'd like to know how the solar system was formed and how the Earth itself was formed. These are things that we would like to know in order to understand whether we are probably unique in our human experience in this part of the world or this part of the universe, or uh, whether what we are experiencing on our planet has been gone through many times in many places. Now, unfortunately, this early history of the Earth has been wiped out by the very factors on our planet that make it such a comfortable place to live in. We have running water, and we have winds, atmosphere. They erode all of the record of our past. We have mountain building, which creates the beautiful continents, but it also wears out and turns over and churns around the record or the rocks that were laid down here when the Earth was a young planet. The very life that we have has removed the traces of its own origins. On the moon, however, which we think is probably lifeless, there's no atmosphere, there's no running water at the present time, and we think that the record of its past is infinitely better preserved than it is on the Earth. Just looking at a picture of the moon such as this one shows you countless craters, the scars of meteorite impacts that have occurred throughout the moon's history. Uh, there are 100,000 of them or so visible in a telescope on the front face of the moon alone. Now these craters, which were probably formed by meteorite impacts, have also, uh, or must also, have occurred on the Earth. The same bombardment by meteorites must have occurred. Uh, there, there are, however, very few remains of those craters left. One of the few remaining is the Arizona crater, uh, a crater 4,000 feet across that you can see uh, when you fly, let's say, from New York to Los Angeles in a jet. Uh, this is one of 20 or so craters that are still visible on the face of the Earth. The other hundreds of thousands or millions have been worn away and turned over and buried. Because of the fact that these craters still remain on the moon, but are gone from the Earth, we are pretty confident that the moon surface goes back farther than the surface of the Earth. Uh, just as a digression, by the way, uh, I'd like to mention that there was a big dispute among uh, scientists until recently over whether the craters on the moon were volcanic or meteorite impact. I think most people believe that while some of these craters are volcanoes, the majority of them are meteorite impacts. And the reason they believe that can be demonstrated in the studio. A, uh, when a meteorite comes into the surface of the moon, it has so high a speed that its energy per pound is five or ten times that of TNT. It drills a clean hole in the surface of the moon and uh, buries itself underground, driving a plug of moon rock ahead of it at such a great rate that the, pl the plug of rock is compressed and heated to a gas, a vaporized rock gas. When the meteorite comes to rest, then uh, this plug of hot gas explodes, ejecting all the material above it and forming a crater, something like a bomb crater. Bomb craters have exactly the same size and shape as, of, as most uh, meteorite, most craters on the moon, and we think, therefore, that moon craters are bomb craters. I can't explode a bomb in the studio, but I have buried a firecracker in a uh, bin of sand to uh, produce a, a small crater of the kind you can see in surveyor photographs of the moon, and a crater which, in minuscule form, has the dimensions, the scaling, and the shape of, um, of lunar craters and bomb craters on the Earth. That was very satisfactory because it shows not only the characteristic conical shape of, of uh, many lunar craters, but it even shows uh, the lip that forms around them and uh, the bits of debris, in this case they're chunks of flour, uh, that litter the field. And it shows these rays, these radiating lines 
of light material by which uh, scientists always are able to recognize freshly formed new craters on the moon. In particular, uh, this little explosion crater looks just like large bomb craters and like most lunar craters. So I think there's no doubt what the origin of lunar craters, of many of them at least, is. That doesn't uh, exclude the fact that some craters are volcanic, but that's another story, that's a, another matter. Now, there's a very interesting uh, consequence of the, of the fact that many craters on the moon are explosion craters for, formed by meteorites. Uh, I have a picture of a 500-foot crater, uh, uh, in the, uh, which happens to be in the ocean of storms on the west limb of the moon. It's actually in the mouth of the face of the man on the moon when you look at him in the sky. And you see in this crater a uh, littering of the field of the ocean si surface around it with chunks of rock, some of them 10, some of them 20, 30 feet in diameter. Um, the significance is that when we land on the moon in each of our landings, although the exploration or the region explored is quite small, perhaps the size of a garden plot uh, in the first landings, we will probably find on that uh, uh, garden plot a, an accumulation of debris, as shown in the next photograph, the surveyor photograph, taken of a region on the moon similar to the regions in which the landings are, take, are occurring. Uh, a, we will find an accumulation of debris, as you see in this picture of the moon's surface, uh, representing rocks hurled out of craters all over the moon, rocks from all ages of the moon's past, all depths, all places. Uh, a, an excellent sample of the whole moon acquired from the exploration of one uh, small territory. At least we uh, will be finding these things, this variety, if, if we're lucky. What will we do with these samples of rocks when we get them? Well, the, the key question always, I think, in discussing the scientific interest of the moon is, does any part of its surface go back to the missing billion years of the solar system's history and the time in which life appeared on our own planet, or does it not? How old is the surface of the moon? There's much controversy on that question. Some of us hope or expect that parts of the moon do go back to that first missing billion years. And uh, partly with this motivation, among the experiments performed on the lunar rocks as soon as they are let out of quarantine in Houston, the single largest block, about 30 or 40 experimental groups here and abroad, will be concerned with dating these rocks. They're dated radioactively using the fact that all rocks on the Earth, and we're pretty sure on the Moon, contain trace amounts of radioactive substances such as uranium. They're present in very, very minute traces, I think a few parts per million, but nonetheless enough so that the uh, radioactivity can be detected if one has a, a Geiger counter. I have one here. It's connected to a... Um, to a, an amplifier and a microphone so that it gives a visible click every time it's triggered by the passage of a, an energetic particle through it. You can hear it click once in a while as I speak because a cosmic ray has passed through it. I also have a piece of rock which contains not invisible amounts but in an invisibly small amount some radioactive uranium. And as I bring this rock up to the Geiger counter, the proof of the existence of that radioactivity in the rock is, is, is in the fact that an absolute cascade of counts comes out of the counter, almost drowning my voice. This radioactivity itself is not the main point. It uh, is not the means used to date the rocks uh, directly. Uh, that's done in the following way. That whenever a radioactive uh, uranium atom decays, emitting one of the particles that we just heard being audibly uh, detected by the counter, uh, it is transformed into a new nucleus and eventually winds up as lead. If the rock is very old, most of the uranium in it has been converted to lead. And when you measure the ratio of uranium to lead by delicate chemical analyses, you find very little uranium and a lot of lead. If the rock is young, very little of the uranium has been converted. And when you measure this ratio, you find mostly uranium and, and very little lead. So the ratio of uranium to the lead it produces by decay measures the age of the rock. We hope when we make that measurement, our, our experimenters, that they will find some samples whose ages turn out to be 
three and a half billion years or more and supply us with information on the missing pages of the Earth's and the Moon's history. And that will be the greatest scientific prize that we can possibly capture from the lunar exploration. So the paradox of the Moon is that precisely because it is a poor piece of real estate and probably lifeless, uh, with little or no water, for that very reason, it is likely to have preserved the record of its past better than the Earth. And in those samples, we hope for, or uh, expect that we will find clues to the origin of the Earth, the origin of the solar system, perhaps even uh, the conditions under which life began on the Earth, and organic molecules that give us a hint of the way in which life evolved out of non-living chemicals on this Earth, if that's the way, in, in fact, in which it happened here. The surface of the moon can be the Rosetta Stone of the Earth and the solar system and reveal the answer to ancient mysteries.